Seemed like the market had a little pullback today, huh? Yeah, it seems like, uh, you know, post-chain, I, I see it's just more opportunities to accumulate, like, cheap posts and cheap post X. Um, I think I think some people, like, with the recent rise of, like, you know, uh, BTC and Ethereum, I think some people are, like, trying to move some funds, like, get, get on that train and then they'll probably start reverting profits back to post-chain. Because uh, blockchain is just thriving as an ecosystem, right? So many projects, so many like cool stuff, and like the everybody's like, every project on blockchain is feels like they're doing really well. Yeah, for sure. I know. I talked about it before. Like, if I was Richard, what I would do is you know do what he did, pump it over sack, and like like the guy has a patience. Super quick patience, so I would pump it over and then just wait a while. So I don't think he's going to do anything for a while and just see what what people stay and and uh, what people don't. And uh, we got to build. And when you're in your when you're in uh, protocols like ours, like I said it before, I kind of wish the accumulation phase would last a long time. So like you saw it today with a little bit of pullback, it created massive volume in like almost all of the tokens and they all paid really really well today dca and into a lower cost so you get more more of those tokens so it's kind of a win yeah it, it really is like a delayed gratification type of game you know like markets it, it's you know whoever's, whoever's the most patient is gonna win you know because markets at least my perspective is just, you know, people trying to like take profit out of each other, right? And eventually somebody will mess up like that trade and they'll lose some money. But whoever is the most patient, assuming they're in like a good long-term asset, that money is going to eventually come back to their pocket because they're, somebody's going to mess up along the way first. And it seems like Richard, it's, he's like a master of delayed gratification and really waiting his time to, like jump in the market like we saw like he completely disappeared out of the market he wait waited for everything be at the lows of the lows and then he just went in and boom starts scooping it up just giving the market a signal hey i'm still here i'm buying and then everybody starts buying after him right so and then obviously they're pumping and then he's like i'll just let people dump it again think it's dead and then i'll buy some more it's 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 nice to see. Yeah, for sure. That I, I think I made a post about it the other day or something. But you know, they have these. Um, you hire money managers and you hire these four hundred one k advisors and all these things. And most of the time, the reasons why they do well isn't really because they're that smart, or they do, but they apply the money that they receive every month and dca and they don't overthink they just kind of like a protocol they just keep buying these funds or whatever and a lot of times they don't seem like the best buys or seem like bad buys but they just keep doing it and those outperform what most people do if they get to choose their stocks because they just do the same thing you can't time the market and so if you buy the passive income protocols it's kind of the same thing like if you can buy and delay your gratification um like it's kind of a winning formula that's tested you know been tested in lots of markets with lots of things um it's hard to do that sometimes but um it, it, i think it'll really pay off a lot of the stuff is so young that you don't really see like the burning that half a percent of burning which i think will come into play um all this stuff it just it's going to take time um it's going to be interesting to watch it all play out. Uh, yeah, I agree 100%. We always yeah. underestimate what the market can do in the long run, and we kind of like overestimate the short term. And uh, and yeah, it's it's about being an asset that pays you with yield and good assets that you want to hold, that you know that, that there will be people holding, you know, three, four, five, ten, twenty years down the line. 
we know that there's going to be a demand for for that asset because it generates good yield, generates yield in like the best assets to hold in the market, right? And um, let me accept the black Thorn request. And uh, yeah, it's mastering that delayed gratification. You know, people overlook uh, like the effect of like compounding that like little that you earn every day and taking supply out of the market and it's just gonna make it harder for whoever's coming after you to buy uh so if everybody if anybody wants to talk uh as i said feel free to request uh, raise your hand and uh it should be uh an open space not only about post warning but post chain as a whole crypto as a whole and uh and hopefully to get more people on board and if any anyone's a newcomer to our, our ecosystem um if you want to ask questions or, or get to know anything like specifically also yeah feel free. hey thanks guys i um i'm brand new to your ideas i'm just checking it out and my question is Right now, the bots are buying back and forth. The R bots are buying back and forth, and that's where the, the I guess the earnings come from. Is that the R bots are paying the taxes, right? Is that how, how, how is that the basic concept, or am I missing something? Uh, that that's part of the concept. I think uh, the bots are 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 definitely a huge part of it. But uh, you know, just like na naturally, just our community as well. You know, buying up and selling as it take profit or do you want to invest it's also generating opportunities you know price discrepancies for these are bots to come in and place a trade right uh so so yeah definitely it's not solely our bots but they definitely play a huge part and we've been seeing that and uh you know our whole intention with the ecosystem is you know expand uh this web of lps that we're kind of like building together uh, whenever we deploy a new new product, uh, whenever we enable a new pool on our yield farms, um, you know, supposedly to attract more liquidity in a different pair, uh, where it could possibly not only just strengthen the overall price uh, and liquidity of the project, you know, it becomes more. Uh, there's it's 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 harder to bring the price down, right? But um, it also gives more opportunity for generating these. These fees, which in turn uh, feed feed uh, all, all of the holders some some yield, right? And whichever whichever are the assets they like more, and we want to keep you know collaborating with uh, new like strong, successful, transparent like cypherpunk communities that you know value post chain ecosystem, and uh, you know assets emerging assets that might be. Like good long term, and obviously the classic Pulse Chain, Hex, Pulse X, Inc., uh, so that people can earn the yield, you know, and the best asset assets in the market without suffering, you know, any impermanent loss, right? And, uh, and, and giving them the ability to like naturally delay gratification, right? And ability to com compound their yield into an asset that's, you know, ever deflationary and the which pays that yield, right? So if they're not selling naturally, they're just increasing their shares in the system, right? Okay, so what I'm, I'm the thought process I'm having here is that let's say right now the R bots don't care about the tax coming and going, um, and that's where some of the profits being made. What if Richard or his devs or whoever is running these things uh, says, "Wait a minute, why are we doing this?" Um, we're losing money on these transactions unless the R bots are programmed to recognize the tax and still make the tra tra the trade, even with the tax of coming and going. That's the part I'm concerned about is that if we get into this and then the whole R bot thing turns off because someone finally realizes that they're being exploited, what or I, I, that's just my that, that's a, my worst case scenario. I'm, well, I mean, it's not a worst case. That's just what I'm thinking about. Who's in it? What if someone realizes it and says, "Hey, we're we're getting screwed here. Let's turn this off." They are being exploited. They're making money. We just happen to be making more money than they are most of the time. Do they even know? Do they are about the program to know the tax coming and going? Yes, they are because they have to make money. So you'll see it on tokens with a tax that they won't make the trade until there's enough money for them to make 
to overcome the tax. Like you ah, see, okay. That's why we like to pair with some tokens that don't have any tax, because then it keeps a tighter margin. So if you pair two tokens that have, say, 5% tax each, the bots won't come in and trade those until there's over that 10% difference. Because they make money, but they'll, they'll make money at like a half a percent, right? Where we're making, you know, 2% on that trade. They're making a half. They're happy, and obviously we're happy. So we're not exploiting it. So even if they were Richard's bots, somebody else would come and make a bot. And a lot of the bots are third party because they are turning a profit. That's what I was concerned about, that there was some type of you know, hole in the system and they didn't recognize it. And once they recognize it, they shut it off. No, nah, I mean, most people... That and, and we have users right themselves, right, also generating the trades, right? When people want to invest, you know, buy a little bit and hold or sell because they want to take a profit. They think the price moved too high. And, uh, yeah, so there's always going to be, like, bots competing with bots, you know, people willing to, to take profit, people willing to invest because they believe they want to, you know, earn some yield and post or post X. Uh, as long as we, you know, remain together as a community, right? Okay. Um, my next question is, I was on your website and reading up on stuff, and it said to get even a bigger yield, you have to participate in the LP pool. Do I just have to put the money in the LP pool, or is there something additional step I have to take? I was going to buy the token and then go go on the V2 LP pool, but I, I wasn't sure exactly if I was missing something. Nope, not, nothing additional. And that's kind of like the beauty of our protocols. Um, you just add the LP, keep the LP in your wallet, and you'll be earning your rewards. You just have to make sure you keep at least one token liquid in your wallet because that's how the contract references to which wallets to distribute the rewards. Right, they'll see, okay, this wallet has a balance, so I can send whatever accrued rewards they should receive. And then that's kind of the beauty of our protocol, right? Everybody is like creating like, oh, you have to click this button and then like stake LP. And then, you know, it's creating these complex complexities, which just makes, uh, makes it hard to onboard like new users, normies who aren't into crypto. You know, if you send them some reflux or some ink X or vortex, and then boom, and then they don't have to do anything, and they're naturally going to see like some yield accruing in their wallet, and they don't even need to connect to the website, right? Also, like a safe practice, uh, they're just simply buying the asset or adding LP. Uh, it cannot be like more simple than that in order to earn basically the best yields in the market. So, so yeah, that's it's that's all you have to do. Just add LP. What's to prevent people from getting rugged in this protocol? I'm sure there's, you already have that, but I, I just wanted to ask. Uh, so with all of our protocols, um, they don't have any admin keys. Uh, we renounced ownership on all the contracts, and all of our contracts are publicly verifiable. They're transparent, like on PulseScan. If you like search, you can see the code. You can see everything it's doing. You can see there's a limit on on the tax that we can we can uh, impose whenever some whenever somebody's selling. Um, so uh, apart from like a lot of different projects on post chains that might have a big community, right? But when you put, paste the address on the scanner and you look at their code, and boom, you can't see what the code is doing. It's unverified, basically, you know, shady. They're not showing what the code is really doing, right? Even though they might have like thick liquidity, big community, uh, you don't. So our, 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 our purpose on Pulse Chain and crypto is just promote transparency, true cypherpunk, true decentralization. These protocols can live forever. People are worried, worry free, right? Because there's no admin keys, ownership's been renounced. And uh, majority of the liquidity in these protocols, at least in the PLS pairs, they're burnt as well. So uh, it's, nobody can withdraw that liquidity. And uh, secondly, the liquidity is also decentralized, right? Because we are incentivizing people to add liquidity. So, so technically, you know, if somebody pulls the liquidity, you have, you know, 50 other people that still have liquidity at stake. Aside from the liquidity, which is a major part of it, which is already burned, right? So. Did, did that help answer your question? What's going on? 
I don't know if he's here or not. Can you guys hear me? Or did I just read myself? No, you're here. It says he's muted. I don't know if he's talking or not. Yeah, thank you. I got that. Um, so if I wanted to become, you know, a big whale in this, I, mean, I don't have a lot of funds, but I, I can throw a few thousand or something like this. Where would you suggest I play? I, I, I guess I guess I, I'm asking for financial advice when I'm not supposed to be. I, I just don't even know which ones to go into. Yeah, so that, I mean, anybody can chime in and offer their opinion. Again, always no know. financial advice. You know, nobody's it's a financial money. advisor here. Uh, but it would be totally up to you. What what assets do you believe in the most? Uh, you know, you, you kind of do your own research and say, hey, yeah, definitely like Pulse Chain. I like Pulse Chain. I like Pulse X. I believe, you know, Richard's still going to be around. Pulse X is going to succeed. Um, and then you start accumulating some vortex, some reflex, or whether you believe in the P DAI narrative, you know, and you see some pot potential in the P DAI uh, appreciating, and then you might accumulate some G DAI. So we're trying to offer as many options to people as possible, but it ultimately is up to you. Uh, I'm just accumulating every single one of them, you know, because uh, you also, at least the way we've been doing recently, you know, if you hold a specific amount of any one of our tokens, you're also eligible for, you know, a, an airdrop. So this is kind of like some inside info. We we did a stream with like PTGC uh, recently, you know, and it seems like there's going to be some collaboration and future product that will, you know, pe earn people yielding PTGC, which is a token that's like doing tremendously well in the market, like has one of the strongest liquidities in Pulse Chain, the strong community. And then that now you'll, assuming you have like a decent amount of one of our tokens, you could be entitled to basically free money that's going to earn you more free money in a token that's doing really well. And, um, and yeah, so it would be up to you, really. Yeah, man, like we're not going to tell yeah, you go, when, go to ahead buy, uh, offer. when to buy, how much to buy. Former, if you're saying something, I might not be able to hear you. Yeah, I guess I'm asking for something that doesn't make any sense. I'm just looking for advice here. I don't really understand it all yet, but yeah, I'm, so I can I'm, chime in. I can chime in. So um, I'm one of the newer members into the Pulse Lorian Guild. Okay, I'm, I'm back. Been, can you guys hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep. Awesome. Okay, yeah. perfect. So I was about to um, chime in and answer um, Blackthorn Cryptos. Um, comments here so um i've been a member of the Lorian guild for about three weeks now so i'm still relatively new to this community although i have learned so much like this community and this ecosystem within the pulse chain ecosystem is still continuing to grow at a massive rate and i'm just i continue to be in awe of um what all is happening within this Pulse Warrior ecosystem, and I'm just really happy to be a part of it as I continue to join these spaces, um, gather as much information as I can. So it's definitely a great place to be. But what I did was that I, um, like, for sure, I want to um, be in Pulse Chain, Pulse X incentive, and both EHEX and PHEX. So those are like my five pillars, if you will. So um, given those pillars, that's what enabled me to um, get into Reflux, Vortex, Ink X, Caviar, and G, such that I can passively earn income for all five of those tokens. So um, that was pretty much my starting point. Um, I did not do all of this at once. Like when I first joined this community, um, I started off my, my very first buy, the, the very first token I found out about was G. And then from there, that led me to caviar. And then um, when I was in the previous space, or maybe the one before that, that's when I was actively making buys for both reflux and vortex. And then um, most recently, what I had got into finally was Groku because Groku is a bit of a unique crypto. Um, Paul Former, do you want me to stop talking? I see your hand is up. No, you go ahead. You finish. I'll wait. 
Oh, okay. I'm <laughs> I'm almost done with this first thought. I, there's just so much to say. So, um, what I recently did was I took a position into Groku finally, and Groku is a bit unique because by investing into Groku, that allows you to earn passive vortex, and by having vortex, it already enables you to earn pulse X passively. So I have both Groku and Vortex earning me even more Pulse X and then on top of that I did an LP for Groku so all of this was planned just to really maximize my passive income that I have specifically for Pulse X and then for all the others I just continue to um, accumulate my positions in the other tokens so that I can just ultimately play the long game have as much passive income coming in as possible and just maintain that mindset of having this be a long-term strategy because one day, not only will the core pillars appreciate in value, but you know, all these other amazing tokens within Pulse Warrior ecosystem will also appreciate in value, which will give you even more passive. So for me, it's just trying to attain and build as much passive income as possible. Like that's really the name of the game for me, aside from just increasing my positions and my core tokens. So that's what really drives me and motivates me to be a part of this ecosystem because what Pulse Lorian and the team are doing, they're really doing amazing work here in this space. And I'm just really excited to see what else is going to be coming up in the future? Um, I know Armor gave me like a really good chill earlier today when I saw what he posted. So maybe I'm hoping we can get more into that because I had joined an additional Telegram group earlier today as well. But um, not to get super long winded, but I just wanted to basically let this space know like what motivated me to get into this ecosystem and what. I'm hoping to continue doing as more projects are released and as the value of what we are investing in continues to grow because we're just getting started. This is only just the beginning. So I hope that what I said was helpful to you and at least gives you somewhat of a starting point to how you can become more engaged in this community. But, but at the end of the day, it's just a really great place to be and I'm very happy to be here. Cool, cool. Thank you. Yeah, I, you kind of hit the same four or five pillars I want. You know, P hex, D hex, pulse, and pulse hex. Um, I can I ask a separate question that I want to ask about these NFTs. Mint your NFT. I don't really know what it works and says they're accelerator. I'm not exactly clear on what it does or why I would buy that over the rate of tokens. So the NFT, when you mint it. That pulse goes to buy Vortex off the market and lock it into the contract, right? So those NFTs are like tiny little Vortex stakes, okay? That'll never end, all right? And uh, each one of our contracts has an accelerator built into it. And what that is, is it's basically a benevolent god whale, right? Like it has a shit ton of tokens and it uses its yield to buy the token off the market and then add it to liquidity, right? And just each one of these contracts has one. And uh, every time we launch one, we just preload it, right, um, with tokens. So, yeah, it does what it does. The, the NFTs, I mean, they're great. <laughs> they pay me out of PulseX just like Vortex does. Um, and recently, we airdropped a bunch of people who had the NFTs, some GDI, right? So, we're finding out ways for to benefit the holders of it, um, of the NFTs. But, yeah, they, they pay out in PulseX. That's what they do. So, yeah, they're great. Yep, totally. So, yeah. And then, um, yeah, being an FT holder, right, obviously no expectations. But it seems like you could also earn, you know, future airdrops as well, which could even make it more, more valuable, right? And then yeah, think of them, they're also as basically uniting the, the whole like a uh, guild, right? Our whole community. 
because you know we see like people on the chat you know they're putting on the helmets of their nfts you know when they buy an nft they're basically burning vortex forever you know they're throwing pls into the pool and burning it forever so um Yeah, because it's about 40 bucks. I just kind of did the calculation. 300,000 pulse is about 40 bucks to buy the NFT. And I'm yeah. trying to decide if I just put it, you know, the, if I want to put that same pulse into something else in your platform or the NFT. Holding the, um, holding the, um, the, the Vortex liquid, it's probably going to yield you more pulse X. But, you know, holding the NFT is basically always going to yield you pulse X as well. But you, also can get some airdrops and they're basically just helping the protocol as a whole you, you know because those tokens are, are that liquidity that pulse they got in uh via the uh, mint is gonna is gonna it's basically gonna burn vortex forever right so we and we noticed we already burned almost 13 percent of the supply of vortex Which is crazy, you know, when you compare it with other projects. Um, okay, I I had a, another question because I'm I've been looking at this for days and days. Um, if I, I am seeing this, and most of those transactions are pretty small twenty bucks, forty bucks, sixty bucks, maybe two hundred dollars. If you're going to put a few thousand. Wouldn't that really um, get a lot of slippers there, or should you just do, you know, fifty, hundred dollars here and there? What it do you think is cool? You're looking at okay. Right, like the reflex liquidity is. Let me pull this up so I know that I'm not talking on my butt. Uh, let's see. It should be a hundred and seven thousand or yeah, like right now. Just this liquidity reflex. is thicker. It's probably the thickest. Then you go to vortex. Um, and then I think caviar is probably the next thickest one. Um, but yeah, yeah. So if you're worried about a slippage issue, the lower the liquidity, you're going to want, and you don't want to eat like too much slippage, you're just doing chunks at that point, right? Okay. Pulse that should come. Yeah, you. and uh, uh, make sure that um, you have your settings set, you know, above 5% slippage. Um, usually is necessary with um tax tokens right i wouldn't go crazy on like going crazy into one right like we we have a lot of tokens right so it's basically pick your yield be responsible pick up a little bit of it consider putting it into liquidity hang out in the liquidity pool right um people that easy it's not necessary to go hard on these tokens right um uh, armor is trying to get up. I think. I think. I don't know. Yeah, I think I wasn't. I, I know you tried armor. to give it to me. I, I just. Re yeah, I just. I just. Yeah, it seems like he's going to speak yeah, again now. Yeah, but reflex is our thickest one, right? And you can really go into into how you want to analyze these. I've been here since day one on reflux. Since then, we've come out with everything else. I pick. I find the. I find the most undervalued one, and that's the one I get. Uh, just because I have all of them at this point, right? So it's it's no big deal. Um, I picked the one that is the cheapest, right? And you would have to go through, you know, all of these. But, you, see, you asked earlier, like, you know, not financial advice, blah, blah, blah. And I'm not going to tell you what to buy, when to buy, where to buy, which one to buy. You have to make your own strategy, right? Like, I don't know your finances, nor do I care, nor is it any of my business, right? You need to be responsible for yourself and build your own strategic investing, right? Like, we're just building cool shit, and we hope that people enjoy it too, right? As far as, like, what, you know, again, you know, never risk more than you're willing to lose, stuff like that, right? Be responsible, don't FOMO, it's, you know, stuff like that, Um just be responsible, man. That's that's all we can really tell you. What's up, Arbor? Yeah, thank you. No problem. I, I really do appreciate that. I, yeah. I wanted... Yeah, are there a lot of other tax tokens like this out there? Yeah, there are, but we aim to be the hub for when people come to Pulse Chain and they're interested in reflection tokens, tax tokens, yield tokens, whatever you want to call them. 
uh, we aim to be the hub for them. But yeah, there's other ones out there. The only other one I'm aware of is PGTC, I think. Yeah, PTGC. I really like that one. Um, there, that that chart just keeps going up. It's crazy. Uh, but that one yields in itself, and every time a token is moved, buy, sell, transfers, um, anything, it's five percent, and it just keeps pumping the pumping the chart. Right? It's great. Uh, there's another one called Earner. There's a couple other ones that I'm not going to bother mentioning. But yeah, there's there's plenty here on Pulse Chain. You can definitely find them. But just adding before Honor like speaks, uh, definitely we have like some pretty unique features to our protocols, right? Uh, the accelerators, the NFTs, um, like building this web of LPs, and then uh, the, the fact that liquidity providers also earn 2x the, the yield, the rewards. So it's not like most reflection tokens, uh, they just yield themselves, right? And it's just ours, it has like some pretty innovative features and unique to our own ecosystem. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Arlen. Yeah, I was had a hard time speaking for a little while, so I'm a little backed up. But one of the things that was brought up a little while ago was the fact that you don't have a big bag and you're trying to do your best to get a bigger bag and all that. Well, compounding, as everybody knows, is one of the strongest things you can do if you have a small bag or any bag in that matter. And so when you look into the Groku and the Vortex, um, if you get a little bit of Groku and Vortex, then it compounds for you, right? So over time, you'll that compound, you'll get more and more Vortex and more and more PLSX. And that'll be strong, especially if you hold for years. That'll really add up. You'll get a bigger chunk of the pie. And also, when you think about that, not everybody is comfortable LPing or they want better price appreciation or for whatever reason they want to keep liquid. Well, everybody knows that if you keep your tokens liquid, you can be diluted, right? Because whoever stakes or whoever provides LP, their um, shares get locked. Well, if you get a little bit of Groku, it will kind of counterbalance the dilution. Um, because it'll keep feeding you vortex and it'll keep up probably it'll probably outpace whatever dilution there could be um, you'd have to do math and whatever whatever um, to figure that out but it should outpace your however you're being diluted um, so those two and there was a um, there was something else i was going to say but now i forget but the the reason why i bring up the the grow coup too is there might be future tokens that are like this. So um, it was kind of a test um, to see how it worked. And I think it performed well. It's not all about um, price on that, right? It's more about um, acquiring more vortex and counterbalancing the dilution plus just uh, compounding as a whole. So, um, yeah, that would be my advice. Yep, de definitely good advice. Uh, I think I think the same same lines as you guys. You know, the way I see it, it's a long term thing. I know there's limited amount of shares for all of these tokens, and you know, as people transact, there's always going to be less and less of these shares that yield you like all of these cool assets. And I don't want to be the guy. I, I I'm like we're true cypherpunk at least. Myself, you know, we want crypto to be adopted by the world. Everybody, you know, like obliterate with this financial system of like slavery, like uh, inflation, you know, just putting people in debt for for their yeah, lives. Back in a minute. And yeah, and then the 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 whole deal is like, you know, these assets will appreciate over time as you know more people get onboarded, more people you know decide to take a little bit of risk and jump in to get this yield and you have a NAS, you're holding an asset that's ever deflationary, appreciating, is paying like, you know, the best type of yield in the market. Um, and then, uh, you know, you, eventually, if you build a nice position and these assets become, you have greater volume, greater arbitrage, you know, bigger community, you know, you'll be earning enough yield where you can live off as passive income, right? 
And then basically, let's say you don't even spend all of that passive income, and then you're just further compounding it back into that asset that gives you more yield. So it's just, it's really is a positive like uh, cycle. As long as people are delaying gratification, you know, um, compounding, and uh, you know, it's all we know. We know all crypto is is truly it's Metcalf's law, right? Network adoption, but with the demand uh, in place, you know, we know there's demand. It's just these assets will just have, always keep generating value, right, and always becoming scarcer. And these shares, like what I say. Obviously, not financial advice, but I recommend you know hold on to them because it's just going to be harder and harder to acquire these shares. Uh, we see that with Vortex itself, right? There's only about seven percent of the supply available uh, in the market and the pool. You know, thirteen percent of it already has been burnt. And on reflux, it was almost what nineteen percent. I don't know. On Incax, we already burned 50% of the supply right out of the bat. Goku is like 30, 35% of the supply burned. So it's it's really high burn in our protocols compared to others. And, uh, you know, it just, just keeps paying your yield, you know. You can focus on whichever one you want to accumulate first. Um, but as, as I said, not, not financial advice. Just sharing my peanut brain, two cents. Go, go ahead, Big Bear. Hey, what's up, Guild? Everybody, uh, no, I just wanted to touch on what Armor was saying um, about compounding. You know, the other thing that that maybe he mentioned it, but I, I I didn't quite catch it. But is the fact that the the Groku Vortex LP pool also pays two x rewards. So if you got a little bit of Groku and you got a little bit of Vortex, that whatever Groku, you, if you're holding it liquid, it's still getting you Vortex. But if you put that Groku and that Vortex into the Groku Vortex LP on V2 and PulseX, you're going to get 2x rewards. So now you just doubled the compounding effort of those assets that you're holding. Now I know not everybody likes LPing. It freaks some people out. Um, but that's the guild's way of rewarding you know, loyal, loyal holders uh, that want to put their tokens into the liquidity pool by doing that, you're basically putting your you're putting your your assets up for sale for any potential potential new buyer that comes through the door. So there's no there's no hoarding, there's no um, being a pig trying to hold all the tokens off the market and, and then you know dump on somebody's head. LPing is like the classiest, easiest, most intelligent, constructive way to DCA your way into a position or DCA your way out of a position. And when you when you do it on on the uh, token appreciation going up, you're acquiring you know if it's if it's if it's a, a, a PLS pairing, you're acquiring more PLS and your and your whatever native token whatever that stack is it's decreasing, but you're gaining your PLS on the way out, all the way up when that chart's rising. You're you're, and then at the end of the day you can pull your LP at the top of the market you know the top of the bull if you want to time it for that, and um, you're going to have a big stack of PLS. What's PLS going to be worth uh, in 12 to 18 months? Who knows? I'm guessing more than what it is today. So, you know, this really, this, this whole ecosystem really is about the long-term play. This, this is a, this is a, like almost a two year out window uh, when everybody's going to sort of be looking to reposition their portfolios in preparation for the bear, um, which, you know, the, the Postlerian ecosystem has a protocol sitting there waiting that's just perfect for that time. And it's called DIEX, and it pays you an E-DIE, okay? So can you imagine rolling profits out or a portion of your profits out of the current situations in the market at the top of the bull and then getting a solid position in something like DIEX and then just earn E-DIE through the whole bear market? I mean, it's just, there's so, there's so much goodness in this ecosystem. It's crazy. And a lot of people just don't know about it yet. But it's just a matter of time. We just got to keep keep present, stay in spaces, keep spreading the word, and educating people on what is actually here to offer for them. So, you know, kudos to the, kudos to the team. Kudos to the community. Um, I, I love this space, man. It's, it's, uh, there's so much opportunity. And, and there, what I love about this, this group in particular is that anybody can pop into the telegram and ask a million and one questions and they give me some of the most noob pleb basic questions 
and these guys don't flinch an eyelash. They don't get they don't get uh, impatient. They don't get pissed off. They just keep answering questions, and that's what te- what that tells me is they're really here to help people, and that's kind of what this whole movement is about: is, is to uh, free people from from the the fiat slavery system. You know. Yeah, and uh, before you speak, Armour, just one quick point. Uh, adding on to what Big Bear was saying, is like the whole LP game is that if you set up your LP, right, and assuming the price goes up, you can take out PLS profit without hurting the price too, you know, instead of, as he mentioned, you know, just dumping tokens in people's heads. Um, it will still generate reflections the same way. Um, and it's, yeah, it's awesome just adding that. Yeah, go ahead, Armour. Oh, I just remembered uh, what else I was going to say. Um, somebody brought up, you know, making a thousand dollar purchase versus, um, you know, smaller purchase. And uh, liquidity does matter, obviously, on that, but it also matters the LP web and how this whole system works. So, what you would do is if you went in there and you could buy a thousand dollars of Vortex, but what happens is all you create different ratios in that bot, in that pool. That say you bought with PLS, all of a sudden the price on that pool makes Vortex a lot higher. So all the bots come in, right, and they arbitrage and sell against you. So what would happen is you would pump the price up significantly. All the bots would come in and sell and reduce that price. So so you could have got a better average price if you would have chunked that up into um. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll put like two thirds. If I wanted a thousand, I would put, depends on the circumstance. I, I try to do smaller, but because then you'll get, everybody will sell on you. You wait a little bit, you make another purchase and over the four or five buys, you will get a better average price. But not only that, so it doesn't, it matters the LP, but it also matters how many, how much of a web that is there. Because then you get that many more bots selling into that pool. So now we have a lot, a big LP web. And it's good because if you made a $100 buy, you would set off, say, six bots. So you have $100 of volume that you added, but then everybody sells. And you'll probably actually make, say, $120 worth of volume. And that's what we want. We want more volume, more rewards. Um, so what I would suggest is making smaller buys because we have a significant LP web now and it'll make waves and ripples and it actually helps the system, right? Because we want those bots to come in there and sell. That's fine because we're getting paid. So go in there and most, most of the time, a $75, $100 buy, wait a minute, buy some more or, or DCA a hundred dollars a day you know, is a pretty good rule. I wouldn't, not only will you get a better price, but it it kind of helps the whole system run, um, is is what I would suggest. And you got to remember, do this for any token, unless there's only one LP and it's only PLS, then you won't get any of those bots selling on you. You'll just get people selling on you or whatever, but, um, do that for anything. Unless there's millions of dollars, you may not see it like with hex or or something else you may not see it but it is there but with our tokens i would recommend 50 hundred dollar buys until you get your position that you're looking for that folks is alpha right there that is so much alpha like where are you going to go into community and they're going to urge you to just limp in to a position so that you as, as a new member of the ecosystem, so you can actually get a better average price for your purchase. I'm not telling you to ape in and throw it all, you know, throw the big bag in, into the ring all at once. Limp it in, and, and he's giving sage advice. It's, it's exactly uh, how I, you know, move into positions. Sometimes if I feel the urgency, I'll move in a little heavy, but for the most part, I'll put, I'll put a purchase in, and then I'll sit and I'll watch the chart. And then you can see the bot. You can see the bots come in and sell against your buy, and then you can also, at the same time, you can look at, at, at your, your pulse X, uh, your, your ratios for, for what you want to buy. And you'll see the value of what you're going to get goes down when you make your purchase for your next buy. But you wait for the art bots to come in and they sell, they sell against you. Okay. And then you can watch 
the, the amount of tokens that you're going to get for, for what you want to pay goes back up again. And then you can execute that trade. And then you wait until the bots come back and hit, you, hit against you again. And then you execute the next trade. And basically do that until, until you're satisfied. And whether that's, you know, you want to accomplish that in one day, two days, three days, a week, two weeks, a month, like however that works. Um, but that's sage advice, man. That's, that's super big alpha. Thank you for that. Yo. Yo. I, I want to ask, hey. I want to ask you a question. Sure, go ahead. I um I just wanted to ask how many years is the liquidity locked? So the liquidity is burnt uh forever. In all, all of our tokens, at least the PLS liquidity, majority of it. Uh, you can check on the scanner to see exactly how much in each token, but yeah, it's all burnt forever. Okay. Is that going to be renounced? Yes, all contracts are renounced, and you can also double check it on the scanner. All, all contracts are publicly verifiable as well. Okay. What stage did you guys? Yeah, the way we build these the token. Yeah. The... Sorry, what was the question? What stage do you guys want to burn the token, and how many percent of the supply did you guys want to burn first? Uh, so I'd recommend. Have you have you have you been to our website? Uh, usually uh, we have a token page for each of our tokens. And then it shows the amount of burn uh, per transaction and the amount of supply that has already been burned. So all, all of that info is pretty much on the website. Um, but we burned a lot of supply already. I have most of the tokens, like from like the five percent range up to the fifty percent range, and our taxes range is from like you know like one percent, half a percent, up to five percent. In some cases, uh, each token has its uh, particularities. Uh, so you'd have to like go to pulselearn.com and then you can navigate into each of the protocols and then you know you can uh, check it out for yourself what fits your 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 investor style more. And um, yeah, the, the way we built these protocols, the intention of this ecosystem is that, is that people have like safe, transparent uh products you know that will live on forever you know with no need for a team or a website if anything you know uh it's just the website just to make it easy for people to run the stats on these tokens and and uh but you know you don't need to even connect the wallet you can just buy up the token set up a new wallet and you should see like every day uh some rewards kicking in okay 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 thanks bro thanks um yeah, you're welcome. Uh, are you guys planning on getting the project listed on CMC? So, I mean, my experience, it's, it's hard to get listed on these websites. Uh, they're pretty much, you know, like uh, manipulated, um, you know. So they'll, they'll so like we see it with hacks itself, you know, multi-billion dollar project. You know, our project is super small. Uh, it's more interesting for us to keep stuff like in a true DeFi manner, uh, you know, getting it listed on stuff like like Vex Cleaner. You know, most of our tokens are listed. It's hard to get get everything listed just because we launched so many contracts. But we definitely have it on our to do list to get everything you know listed as as we grow the project. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's a community effort, right? Uh, there's no real team managerial effort behind post Loyan, just people who believe in these protocols uh, working together uh, as it's supposed to be with like true DeFi, true cypherpunk movement, true grassroots, like Pulse Chain is, right? Like Pulse Chain doesn't care about getting listed on any centralized exchange, on any rankings, on uh, on any, on anywhere really, right? On being shown by any influencer. And, and that's actually for the best, right? For the betterment of the chain itself. Because we know that the people which are on Pulse Chain, which are on Pulse Lauren, are people who believe in like the true principles behind cryptocurrencies, right? Which is censorship resistance, 
you know, freedom to transact, freedom from anybody is seizing your assets and just building an educated community, you know, who knows how to store their funds in a hardware wallet, who know how to keep things decentralized, who knows how to not like play around and like touch any contracts or like, uh, you know, connect to any websites unless they're really, really, really 100% sure that that's safe. And that's why we built these protocols to be here forever, you know. It's um, true DeFi. They're open protocols, public code, liquidity burned, uh, no admin keys, and just pay use yields, right, in the best assets in the market. And we, we just keep growing it together. So that, that's the end goal. So, but if like listing it on something like coin market cap obviously great but it's at least it's not our top priority right now right our top priority is to be like listing it on like dex screener and you know keep building these protocols and this web of liquidity you know i imagine to get it listed on coin market cap probably is gonna require some money and you know it's most much more interesting to spend that money elsewhere you know actually giving it yep but yeah it's up to the community really right we're all playing a part uh any any other questions or if anybody else wants to speak uh as well feel free to send a request and um, also feel free to share the space, you know, more people can join. Uh, Lucas is in, in, the, in the chat. What's up, Lucas? Uh, I'll just send you an inv invite in case you want to speak. Uh, no need to, to, to join if you don't want to. <clears throat> but yeah, we're, we're really happy. Yeah, go for it, Dave. Um, I just remember what I was going to say earlier. So um, for next week, so end of next week, I just figured out what I was going to do because I was just soaking in the alpha that was coming from both Armor and Big Bear. Like, shout out to both of you guys and everyone here in this space for all the information and the alpha that's being given here because um, I'm not in DIEX yet. So I will definitely want to take a small position in that just so that I'm getting EDI. And then a very important point was made with regards to like, taking profits um, off of your coins as you see fit and just putting them into um, EDI, um, that's not actually the, that's actually not something that I have fully planned out. So that actually helps with my strategy, which that's going to be a little ways out. Like right now, I'm just trying to focus on accumulating as much as I can. And I do like the idea of, dollar cost averaging and getting a little bit of everything because that's what i've been doing um so for next week i know that my personal strategy will be to take an lp position in each token that i hold within this ecosystem because right now i'm doing lp for ink x gdi and then i just started an lp for groku but for the other ones um, I also plan to start an LP just going back to what I was saying earlier, because I just really want to maximize as much passive income out of everything. And then everything just, it compounds on each other. So that's why it's really nice to have a little bit of everything as opposed to going heavy into just one thing, which if you do want to go heavy into one thing and that's your prerogative, you know, that's your strategy but for me personally i just like to have a little slice of everything and then everything's just gonna appreciate in value over time and then you're just gonna have a whole lot of passive income which is what my goal is so that's really the beauty of what post lorian ecosystem is doing so again i'm just really excited about the projects that i currently have or the tokens that i currently have and i'm just really looking forward to what's coming up next because um i had mentioned this in the last space but like with groku being unique such that it um gives you passive vortex and then 
that the two of them also gives you even more um, Pulse X. Um, I did, or I should say, I do have an LP in Groku, but then that um, brought to my attention the fact that I should also do LP for Vortex, which would really maximize my Pulse X. So that's like the only thing that I haven't done yet. And um, the point that I was going to make was um, I'm hoping for a Groku variant of Reflux. So that will be really nice to have in the future because we already have Groku. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> we, we have like, uh, so another inside info, obviously this, all of this cannot be released, you know, all at once, you know. Well, we have to wait, you know, a little bit. Otherwise, you know, just to keep the hype going and also find good moments to to launch like specific products. But I can tell you for sure, there's already like uh, four uh, products on the pipeline, uh, all to enhance uh, value within the ecosystem and um, and uh, even like UI for three of them. It's already developed, and you know, it's just it's coming. It's just have to be like. Uh, little patient we'll, we, we'll just keep building you know it's uh, we it's it will just keep generating more value expanding web of lps giving more airdrops to people more avenues to earn etc sorry yeah but just just sharing. no no i appreciate that brother thank you i i really appreciate that because i think the two i mentioned or that were mentioned was um a Groku variant of reflux and then um a opportunity to earn um passive teddy bears so those are the two that i could think of off the top of my head but obviously there's like you said there's even more stuff coming which i'm very excited about because the only other fun one that i got into was um mojo launch recently so that gives you passive um pepe on pulse chain so those reflections have be been insane card. to say the least that one's What's gonna that? be a wild card, man. I don't know. I I, I think Pepe is gonna like go wild. I don't know. I do. I just have this feeling about it. Yeah, I do too. Because I obviously missed Pepe on Ethereum, so that's what kind of like got my gears grinding about Pepe on Pulse Chain. Like, well, you know what? I mean, to your point, um, is that that one's gonna be a wild card for sure. Like, I have, I actually have more a little more conviction on teddy bear because that's like the hype is mean coin on pulse chain so i did take a standalone position in teddy bear finally so that's why i wanted to um look for an opportunity to have something come out to give you passive teddy which i'm sure that's going to be coming down the pipeline too so i know that and not it can't all be released at once so there's definitely Things coming to keep us hyped, keep us excited, keep us engaged. But overall, I'm just really excited. And I'm definitely excited to see these next four or so projects that's coming soon. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. And uh, I was just going to say, definitely just speculation. But I think all of these PRC20s that, you know, could have like sort of could be like wild cards and could go up massively in value, you know, once there's more adopted adoption with Pulse yep. Chain, you know, everything is bonded with PLS, right? Yeah, go for a big, big bit. Yeah, just kind of piggybacking on what Derek was talking about with LPs. I mean, it's, you know, rising tide lifts all boats. So if you're LP'd against PLS, PLS rockets, guess what happens to the other token you're holding in the LP? It rockets too. He gets pulled up with it. PLS pulls up everything. PLSX pulls up everything. Inc. pulls up everything. Everything pulls up everything else. And when you're LP'd amongst everything in the ecosystem, when you got a tight network of well, of, of very well thought out LP architecture, everything will will pull up. And, and like Armour was saying, it's like a ripple effect. You know, you drop a pebble in the water, you can watch those waves just go and go and go and go and go. And as long as there's an LP, connected somewhere where that wave reaches it's going to trigger the bots and the bots trigger a trade and trades trigger yield okay the other thing that i like to think about is 
in a bull market, when everything's, you know, honey and milk and unicorn farts and all this stuff, I mean, it's like everything's going up, everybody's euphoric, it's great. Okay, well, if you've got one LP position in, 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 in two different assets, whether it's PLS is, is, the, is the trade-off of PLSX or if it's like a, a Groku Vortex LP, whatever. If you've got one LP and you want to skim a little, you got to skim a little off of one LP. But if you're well diversified and you've built yourself an LP portfolio, you can go and you can skim a little. Say, say you got 10 LP portfolios. You can go and skim a little off of 10 LPs to pay the rent, to, to pay the, the, the power bill, to, to, to buy your wife a nice or girlfriend a nice present, to go on a vacation, whatever. I mean, you skim a little off of 10, 10 LP positions or 20 LP positions or whatever many it is that you have, it doesn't damage your, your LP portfolio. You're just taking a little bit, right? You're just taking a little bit. But you can literally build an LP portfolio and live off that on a month-to-month -month or week-to-week or however, to, however often it is that you need to draw funds. And unfortunately, we're still in the day and age where we need to off-ramp into that dirty fiat <laughs> it just is what it is for now. But um, when you're diversified enough, you can extract a little bit of value off of many different positions, and it really doesn't harm your portfolio overall. And like I, like I said uh, before when I spoke earlier, you're not harming the token price because you're not market selling those tokens. You're just skimming off, the uh, off your LP. So, you know, it's just like, it's, I don't know. I used to be freaked out of LP. I used to be totally freaked out about it. And then I had a mentor uh, in the last bull run and, and they sat down with me and really taught me about LP. And um, when you saw V3 came out, I was all confused about that. And I was freaked out about that. And then once I understood how that worked, the light bulb moment just went on. And I said, okay, this is, this is the way I need to, this is, this is how Big Bear is going to play in the market. I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to be LP'd, take my positions, I place my LPs, and then for the most part, I don't touch them. I've been building for like six to eight months now, my LP positions, and I'm not touching them until this bull really gets, gets going, uh, which will be post, post having, um, most likely, probably, I, I see real traction starting According to, you know, how all the other cycles ha have been in history up until now, probably this fall is when things are probably still going to ramp up. But having said that, we have seen a lot more activity in Bitcoin pre-having than we have in previous cycles. So, you know, maybe this is going to be a different, a different horse, a different race. Um, I, I think it's going to be good no matter what. It's just about the timing of it all, I guess. So I'm just going to say some real quick. So I see Armour and um, Ruffins have their hands raised. So that bit of alpha right there, Big Bear, has got me drooling. Like, I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, an LP portfolio, that is essentially what I was talking about as far as um, doing an LP for every single post Lorian token that I hold. Like, that's going to be the next step for me. Like the first step was just to get in, which now I'm in. The second step was to start my LPs little by little. But now the third step is to complete my LP portfolio, which is just massive. So I just really appreciate that mega alpha right there. Cause that's what it's all about. It's like you, like you say, you throw a pebble in the water and the, ripple effect gets going and everything just starts rising and compounding all together and it's just it's gonna be massive guys like i'm excited for every single person in this entire space like it's going to be glorious like once we get into this full-fledged bull run and see what it's all about like it's Oh, man, <laughs> we're about to be eating so good, guys. I can't wait. So that's all I'm going to say, but that, that's, that's massive. Yeah, I just wanted to bring up a, a point I kind of made earlier, but try to make it again, is, you know, we, we want to kind of outperform price-wise in some ways, too. 
And uh, one of the ways I was talking to Ramerd, one of the devs, and we were talking about tokens that inflate versus tokens that burn. And it kind of sent me down a rabbit hole. And you realize that when you get into an LP position, like Big Bear is talking about, and you have token A and token B, token A being the PLS, right, that is going to hold value, and you have token B, and you enter that, and, and you basically lock both sides of a value ratio. Well, when you have token B that that burns at a certain rate, right, it intrinsically it's going to gain in value over the other one. And so you can't really look at necessarily what is burned, but at the rate in which it's burning. And if you would track some of these tokens with the LP web, um, at the rate at which they are burning is increasing. Um, and so basically you have less of token B compared to token A. And the more that we lock in these LPs, right, not financial advice, this is a hypothetical situation, but when over time there is less of token B, hopefully it will outperform token A um, as the rate in which it burns. Um, and so, so you have to look, some have different burn rates than others. Um, so pay attention and th there might be more to this. Um, just, just a thought to keep an eye on. I'll, I'll just wreck us all. Sorry. I'll, I, I know you want to get your hand up. I just want to add one more thing. To that. Mm -hmm. Um, the fact that when you're in an LP, okay, obviously, you know, um, volume is, is heavy on, on, on protocol launches and then it kind of dies off. And then as, as the LP networks get strength, get built and get strengthened, um, the volume that accumulates on a daily basis becomes a little bit more um, consistent. I, let me, for lack of a better word, I'll use that word, consistent. Um, as the, the ecosystem protocols become more known and you, and you have uh, more players enter, entering the, the ecosystem, obviously, the volume will start to pick up. As the bull market starts to mature, the volume will pick up. Um, so when you're in an LP position, you're earning fees. Those fees are paid to you in token A and token B. So, you know, what Armour is saying is you've got tokens that are burning supply out of, exi out of his existence, yet your LP position is earning more of that token on every single buy and sell that's going on in the ecosystem. So those LP positions, you know, are, are they not only appreciating in value, which you can if you have multiple LP, if you have an LP portfolio, you can skim a little bit as you need it and not really you know, hurt yourself or hurt, or hurt the, the protocols themselves because you're not market selling. But as time goes on, those LP positions are growing in token value as well. And you know, that's a really important part to, to keep in mind as well. So sorry, what does go for it, Brad? No, no, not at all. I was just actually going to back up what you were saying. Like, I mean, I, I, uh, I took it, you know, it, you know, as far as like getting comfortable with LPs just the other day. I mean, I've always kept at least 50% of my pulse liquid until recently. And over my multiple wallets uh, a few days ago, I was like, you know what? I've been comfortable enough with LPs for what, eight, nine months now. Like I really like having, you know, multiple LPs, so I just, I decided I don't have any liquid pulse left, except for what's building in my wallets for fees, of course, but, you know, that's how comfortable I am with LPs now, because like you were saying, like, you know, last bull run, I was, I was scared of LPs, because you hear about permanent loss and all this other shit, and you just, you know, you think you're going to lose big time, you know, everybody used to say that, like, if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to miss out, you're going to lose a lot of your coins, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, it took like eight or nine months just to get comfortable with having multiple LPs. Now, now I'm completely comfortable with it. I don't, I don't, I don't want anything liquid sitting in my wallet anymore. I think it's a waste of time. Why, why let that shit just sit in your wallet when you can be making money with it? Making, you know, interest, making more coins. So, you just, you know, exactly what you were saying. So true. Exactly. I mean, one of the things, you know, another point I'll make real quick is that what I've noticed 
um, and what I noticed through the last through the last bull market, and and noticing now as we're sort of things are starting to ramp up with this bull with this bull cycle, is that the value of my LP position when the market pulls back, like we've seen uh, the, the entire pulse chain uh, ecosystem do within the last you know uh, seven to ten days, um, when when the ecosystem when the when the chain pulls back and the prices are dropping. You can look at the value that your liquid assets, how much they drop, and then compare that to how much a, an LP position drops. And my LP positions, yeah, have they pulled back a little bit? Of course, but it's like a fraction of what my liquid positions are, liquid positions have pulled back in value. So, you know, your LP positions will always um, be a little bit more buoyant through market volatility um, as opposed to your liquid positions. So, and I, I mean, I'm with you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not worried. You know, I don't need to hold all the bag liquid to extract every last penny that I can out of a bull run. I'm happy to let the market just gracefully execute me out of my position. And, you know, if I want to pull the LP at, at the, at the climax or whenever I perceive it to be the climax or whenever, whatever my number is, if I want to pull it, then I can pull it then, you know, but in the meantime, I just, I just let the market do what it does, let the bots do what they do, let Hart's Law do what it does. And um, I know that no matter whether it's a little bit of volume or a whole lot of volume that's flowing through that LP on any daily basis, all I know is I'm earning more of token A and more of token B, day in, day out, minute by minute. Yeah, that's, that's the funny part about buying up the price against yourself on any of the coins and pulse learning. It's like... A, I don't really care. I know it's going to drop, you know, you know, you, the bots are going to eat up some of that volume, but that's great for me because now I'm gaining more fees. So I like when that happens, you know? <laughs> so it's like after buying a, a price against yourself and letting the bots eat away at it a little bit, you're gaining pulse while it's happening or whatever, you know, coin you're in, you know, that, 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 to me, it's fun. It's fun watching that, you know, I, I mean, you know, years ago, you buy something and you're, you're participating with everybody else, and that price is going up, and you start seeing it drop. You know, people used to freak out over that. I, I freaking love it now. It's not like it's dropping far. You know, you're just getting that arb, you know, bot activity, and uh, it always stables off, and then the market does its thing. You know, we're we're in a dip. I I thought I caught the bottom of it. We, it looks like we're still going down a little bit more, but you know, nobody's perfect. <laughs> but yeah. It's, it's fun, man. L LPs are fun, you know. I like I like having a, uh, you know, these positions and and being able to just you know, sit on them and like you said, they are insulated a little bit. You don't, you know, you lose, it does. I I feel that way too. I don't seem to lose as much value off of my LPs than I do off my liquid when you take a nice dip like we're having right now. I thought the the RFX chart has been interesting to me. You know, it has the heaviest bonding with PLS, and you watch it, and there wasn't a lot of necessarily action on it for a little while, and that's when it was the most interesting to me. You see it run at like a 10% angle to PLS, and I, I think maybe, um, like I say, not proven, but two things that might be playing into that is one, the burn, and two, there's kind of almost a secondary uh, buying of the tokens that we're not res really seeing. We talked about it with the Groku, but these protocols hold more tokens than they pay. One, so that there's continuous payouts, but two, it's limiting the sell pressure, but it's, it's consuming more than it's paying out. So it's kind of like a burn function or a or another buyer. Basically, it's another wallet that's accumulating whatever tokens those are, and it's creating steady buy pressure. I don't know what the rate is, and it also matters how many sell transactions. There's a lot to it. But when you look at when RFX kind of had a, I don't want to call it a lull, but there wasn't a lot of maybe buys on it, it had that little bit of a slope. And that's a really good indicator uh for me um like what i was talking about something that maybe had you know a hypothetical um 10 leverage play 
on PLS down the road. Maybe, maybe not. Um, I mean, that's pretty powerful. Um, so I think that burn rate plus the amount of that it's holding of the token before it pays out are two things that may be playing into that 10% angle. Um, I don't know. It's just something that I was thinking about. Yeah, RFX is obviously my favorite out of all of them. I, I think I talk about RFX all the time. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's definitely, you know, it's, the rewards are awesome. Like, I mean, and there's nothing that compares, that pays out in Pulse, anyway, to me. I mean, I, the only one that I didn't get into and don't care to and I'm not going to waste my time with is Blaster. I'm not going to sit here and, and advertise other coins in here either, but, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, to me, RFX is way better. At least, for me, anyway. It's, uh... Well, it, okay. it, pay, it pays out quite a bit. What's up? Oh, well, B- Blaster yeah. is, uh, centralized, too, right? Like, if you look yes, at the, if you look at the code, right? Our code is decentralized. And, exactly. Uh, they have a huge dev fee, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, thank you for reminding me of the other reasons why I didn't mess with that token. So the reflux on its slow days, dollar for dollar, and this is all for all the code, dollar for dollar, okay, on a slow day. Reflux is paying more than a validator, okay? Right now, a validator is about $6,000, right, with the 32 million pulse plus the two grand for the validator, all right? Uh, can't really yield pulse X, ink X, incentive X, is paying more than the farms. Again, dollar for dollar, right? <clears throat> Caviar and Jeet are paying more than a T-share. I don't... It's close if it's dollar for dollar. It's close. But on on the average decent volume days, blows it out of the water, right? I'm only speaking on slow days, right? I mean, to me, that that's the goal. And every time, the goal gets achieved. Right, like we're just providing um, what's the word? A different avenue to yield your favorite tokens, other than the native way of yielding them, or in some cases, not being able to yield them at all. Right, like Pepe. I don't really think there's a way to naturally yield Pepe in the code. Right, so that's cool. You know, if we make a one that yields PTGC and it's yielding PTGC, well, then that PTGC is yielding PTGC. It's <laughs> like just having like dollar for dollar comparatively. It's just it's doing what it's supposed to do, right? And I love it. I love it. It's great. Every day I look at my wallet, I'm like just getting tokens, just putting them in my wallet. It's amazing, and they're all my favorite tokens. You know, it's great. Like, the Texan, I'm staking the Texan. The Hex, I'm staking the Hex. You know? It's a little bit here and there, but, you know, those T-shirts are starting to add up, man. They're, they're really starting to add up. So, yeah, so, compounding effect is really, really powerful, right? Like, um, uh, I think it was Albert Einstein, right? He says it's, like, one of the most powerful forces that in nature is the compounding effect, so... That little by little, you know, if you're compounding it, it adds up a lot. Yes, it does. Yeah, and then the, the cool part, um, you know, is um, I think with the, all these different strategies, is like you don't even have to like sell your your like. Uh, your, your your asset that produces yield, right? If you need a little bit of money, you can skimp some, some off of the LP without hurting the price, or you can, uh, you know, you can just sell a little bit of the passive income uh, without hurting the price of the asset. So I think I think the way these protocols were designed, it's, it's, it's pretty unique. I don't, I don't see anything like it. Um, not, a, not on Pulse Chain, not on other chains. So I think we are in a unique position. Um, and then, yeah, Metcalf's Law and a community that's our size, it's, and people that are joining this early, you know, where we, we have like some LPs that are still below 50K in, in terms of value. 
um, it's um, it, it's going to be massive, massive upside potential when yeah. um, people start finding out about these protocols. And the thing is, like, like people sometimes they discredit. Sorry, sorry, to, uh, sorry for my. Yeah, you uh, good, you good. Uh, so some people sometimes they discredit some of our tokens because they'll see like, oh, the the LP is too small. It's like thirty k, like, but. When you put it together in our web of LPs, we already have probably, last time I checked, just in the PLS pairs, uh, probably close to 450K in terms of liquidity. So, and that's massive. That puts us like right on top of, like right at the top with all the, you know, so-called like big fake liquidity projects and post chain. It's just ours more spread out and decentralized. Yep. Yeah. And like, as the pol- as the adoption of Pulse Chain grows, and there's ten times the amount of people here than there are now, and Metcalf's Law, blah 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 blah, we all know it. People are going to be looking for reflection tokens. Okay, it's a market. I don't like, you know, it has a st- stigma with it or whatever. I don't. Hex is a reflection token. Changed my mind. Okay, like the tax is time. Time is the most valuable resource we have. Whatever, right? Like. We can make whatever argument we want, but the fact of the matter is, is that there is a market for these tokens, right? And I want people to be able to come on to Pulse Chain and pick and choose what they want, right? Like, I'm involved in a bunch of different communities, right? Like, that's because I believe that the communities that are building now, no matter what community it is, are going to be the ones that win in the future, right? Because when those people come into the mall, when they come into Pulse Chain, they're going to be looking for something to buy, right? And we know how it goes. So if they're able to come to PulseLorian.com and say, I like PulseX, I want to yield PulseX, boom, there you have it, right? Like, I want to yield Pepe, whatever, you know, like, it's the same code, the same rules apply to everything, and it teaches people the liquidity provide, and it teaches people delayed gratification, and they get rewarded more for delaying that gratification, right? By their own, like, uh, discipline as well, right? Because nobody's stopping you from pulling the liquidity and selling it right it's just teaching you good habits you know so my point that i wanted to bring up was that vortex only has 72 million vortex in the pulse pair that's seven percent of the supply and it's sitting at it's worth three poles right now like when that when it's suddenly then all at once, right? So once all these people come in and they're looking around, like, I guarantee you a lot of them are going to end up in our space, right? In our telegrams. And we'll be educating people just like all the other telegrams will be doing, right? And then all those communities will be blended, blah, 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 whatever. Dude, the moon math, right? These tokens could go crazy, right? Like, they really could. The, the supply is so low on them, like a billion tokens. And then, like, you have however much percentage of each token burned, like, Incentivex has a billion tokens and 50% of them, like, were burned at launch, like, <laughs> it, yeah, it's, I think these tokens are gonna do numbers, man, um, it's just a matter of time, right? Go ahead, Big Bear. Yeah, I was just gonna say that, you know, the funny thing is, is that when, you know, some, some people think that, that tax tokens are, are a bad narrative, they don't like them. Oh, I don't want to pay tax. Well, I'm sorry, but what does the traditional financial system do to you? What happens? Does your bank charge you fees? Yes. Does your stockbroker yes. charge you fees? Yes. Does your investment ma- uh, manager charge you fees? Yes. You know, so people, they get so blinded by what's already happening in their whole life. And, and then they get presented with basically a way better opportunity to have self-custody, self-control, freedom to transact with some fees attached to it. And then they complain about the fees, but they completely ignore the fact that they've been getting shafted by fees up the wazoo for <laughs> forever. Everything has fees, man. Exactly. Pulse has a fee. Yeah. 9MM has a fee. Farms have fees. Everything yeah, has a fee at the end of the day. Like, there is a cost that you pay in just about everything. Heck, staking. When you stake it, you're paying time time is very valuable right so like exactly everything has its sacrifices right like at the end of the day it's just a matter of like, if you're doing it right or not it, it's funny you say you know you talk about taxes I, me as a libertarian i don't like calling this a tax i like calling it user fees you know i don't consider these taxes you know i don't like that word 
I think taxation is theft, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I think of it as more of a user fee to participate because, you know, taxes, you have no fucking choice. You got to pay them or your government will send guys with guns after you. But these user fees are what we're all paying to participate in this system and it benefits us, you know, it, it benefits the holders, people holding on. And, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I know it's just semantics, just words. I got it. Yeah. I know that. <laughs> you came in broken on my end. What was that? I said I've gotten way more rewards than I have paid in fees with uh, Pulse Lorian. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like some of the people who just got in with the newer projects, I mean, if, if people are just impatient, like, I don't know, like, if I do the math and I look at what I, my initial investments in, like, when Reflex first came on, I know I've paid off my initial investment and some. I mean, of course, the newer tokens, you know, it takes a few months, but eventually you, you pay your investment off if you're patient and you're not selling, you know? So it's... Yeah, that's, that's so much true. Uh, people in crypto are so impatient. Like, they're so impatient. Because they they see you know because it's crypto right we see protocols doing like three hundred percent four hundred percent in a week in a month in a day right and then uh, people are just chasing green candles right and what 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 happens when they're chasing green candles they're just buying the top <laughs> and then they exactly yeah and then they buy the top and then like oh they'll see something pump and then like oh they'll get the FOMO and then they'll like they'll fumble the bag they'll jump into another thing and then guess what like people are waiting for that herd coming and it's probably gonna dump instead of like doing the right thing which is delayed gratification like people know that like uh, richard hart said that right there's only a few types of people that make money in crypto one is like um the founders they usually take a, a cut a fee right when they deploy a project um they uh the um, the holders, the long-term holders, right? Which, you know, they endure like the uh, bear market and then like they manage to participate in that bull run. Or the people who profit off fees, which are, in our cases, our tokens. People who hold their tokens, liquidity providers, and they're just earning off fee. They're mitigating their risk off of people who are wanting to expose themselves to risk and trade and swap, right? And then, but the people who get wrecked in crypto, 99.9% .9 of them are the traders. Those are the ones that get wrecked. And it's, oh, yeah. they'll, have, they'll have like one, two, three lucky streaks and then they get wiped out. Or they, they jump into a protocol that's a scam and there's a honeypot and they click on a website that's shady. And just tons of time I see people coming into our telegrams, oh, I got hacked. I lost 20K on a hack. Uh, myself, I've been, you know, caught in like honeypots, rug, rug pulls, you know, by my own lack of due diligence. And one of the reasons why we, we started this ecosystem, you know, we want to like safe blockchain, safe community. And you see tons of networks going down as well. Like Solana goes down every other time. I think in a year it went down 11 times, owned by VCs. Uh, there's Cardano, right, which supposedly 10x more valuable but has like 10x less volume and less projects and less activity and less users uh you we see it here with those a hundred dollar fees whenever you want to swap uh, bitcoin that's technically you know end of s curve not really uh adopted right i mean not really adopted. i mean like very adopted um so there's no much adoption room left who's gonna buy it right to like push the asset up and it's not really that decentralized either, you know, three mining tools owning like, you know, half of the hashing power. So it, it post chain is like we are in a unique position, right? Like uh, doing like everything right the way I see it, like best blockchain in the market, best communities in the market, uh, public code, transparent, decentralized, pays yield. So sorry for my rant. I was just, just, just uh, saying like some stuff, but yeah. Ah, it's a good rant. Not it, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, people are just, it, I, I wish 
people wouldn't be so impatient in, in markets and in crypto markets. Like, uh, you know, I've seen it in, the, in previous cycles like you have, you know, it's like you just want to like take someone sitting down and like, dude, man, like, it's like, uh, you know, I had a nephew who was having trouble in school and I'm like, look, kid, you're not going to know any of these fucking people in two years from now. You know, you're going to start your own life. You're going to, you know, be patient. You know, that's the point I'm getting at. Like, be patient. These assholes in your fucking high school, they're going to be the losers that are still sitting around, you know, the, the football, you know, jo- you know, the, the, the star football player. Yeah, he's going to marry the white trash chick and they're going to have 12 kids together and they're going to stay in the fucking shit old town you're in. You know, just be patient and you'll get through this. You know what I mean? It's the same with crypto. It's like, just hold on to what you got. You're in the beginning of a bowl. And, you know, as long as you're in a good project, you're going to do good. But people just, they, they get impatient. Like you said, they, they chase green candles. I like chasing red candles, you know. Like, when the market starts falling, that's when I want to start buying things again. Otherwise, I'm just holding on. So, I, you know, people need to just get that mentality and just get into LPs and just not pay attention to it, you know. I mean, obviously, you need to check what's going on with your wallets. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, don't get caught up in checking prices every single day. And don't check prices in USD. Fucking look at the, the pulse price, you know. What's the ratio to pulse, you know, for whatever tokens you're in, if you're going to keep looking at it. Because USD price doesn't matter right now. A hundred percent. And a lot of people, you know, that are in crypto um, in general, uh, they'll look at pulse chain and say, oh, Richard Hart is not really that active. Oh, pulse chain... It hasn't really performed that well. It's been a year and it hasn't really reached SAC value for Pulse X. You know, Pulse Chain is just 30% above SAC price. And when it's literally the best time to start buying it up, accumulate as much as possible. But once Pulse Chain starts pumping, you know, like 30, 30% every day and is doing like 3, 4, 5, 10x, everybody will be like, Pulse Chain, Pulse Chain, Pulse Chain. Oh, I saw I it. I knew it. Yeah, yeah, and they were talking about it like they were there from day one. Yeah, it's true. Man, I've experienced this uh, like ever since. I remember 2017, I'd be at work and I'd be talking about Litecoin and Bitcoin, <laughs> and yep. people would laugh at me at the office. They'll like. <laughs> they would like literally like laugh and make fun of me like like every day. I I I, I talk like ev- all the time, obviously, because I was like so passionate about crypto, and everybody would laugh at me. The, the guys that would sit next to me, like, look, the idiot buying like Litecoin and Bitcoin, these like fake like internet money type of thing. And you know, a couple of years later, they're like, "Whoa, man, yeah, I guess you were right." Yeah, and then they're, like, they're checking the price of Bitcoin uh, like at 20k, 30k, and they're like, holy fuck, what happened? I think, yeah. something, that, I think something that I think a lot of people... Think what's going to happen to Paul's Sorry, guys. No, sorry, sorry. Um, big Go ahead. I was just going to say, I put out a tweet, I don't know, it might have been a month or two months ago or something like that, but I just said, you know, look at RH designed... Pulse chain is a system state fork of ETH. More decentralized, faster, cheaper fees, blah, blah, blah. He diluted the supply by 10,000x. Okay. At the time, I think ETH was trading around $2,200 when I posted that tweet. Now ETH is just, just what, just sub 3K. So let's just use 3K as a round number. Okay. So if ETH is worth 3,000 and Pulse chain was diluted 10,000x, that puts Pulse at a price of 30 cents, potential fair market value of 30 cents. Obviously, that's wishful thinking right now because we're so early in the cycle. We're trying to wash out the weak hands. There were a lot of sacrificers that got the, the two and a half multiplier, okay? So there are a lot of excessively accumulated tokens out there that, that are getting dumped into the market, which are, are causing a lot of price suppression right now. But if people are just patient enough, if people are just patient enough, could you imagine? Look at look at look at your pulse stack today and multiply that by thirty cents. It's going to happen. It's not a matter of if; it's just a matter of when. So it's just about patience. That's all. <laughs>